Hi folks, this is Dr. Rob Sivers. I am the Carb Addiction Doc and today we're going to talk about something that's been maligned and, and made fun of a lot but is so serious for so many people, especially younger people between the ages of 12 and 20, 25, but occurs slightly lower frequency but as severely in, in adults. What we're talking about folks is acne, zits, chorbs, um, puff marks, craters. I know that those are horrible words. But this is a devastating disease that has huge psychosocial and psychological impact, particularly on our fragile young youth that are already battling enormous amounts of mental health. So let's break down acne. How does it occur? What is it? And who gets it? Well, acne is a specific skin disorder. And um, I've got some reference papers, so forgive me if I'm looking down. But what acne is, is if you look at... Um, a sweat gland in the skin, particularly certain areas of the skin, uh, face, neck, uh, groin, armpits, um, and that we call them different names, hydradenitis superativa, that kind of thing. This relates to sweat glands and sebum glands and hair follicles. And the human body produces sweat from sweat glands, which are these little coils of, of uh, glands that put out salt that attracts water out through that little gland, almost like the same thing in the kidney that makes you pee, and that's sweating. We also have a slightly separate gland that produces a fatty substance, a waxy fatty substance called sebum, that greases up hair follicles that comes out. The hole is here, the hair follicle is right next to that, and the hair follicle comes up, and the sebum comes out right next to that. And the quality of that fluid sebum mixture, think of it as saliva and phlegm, uh, same thing is being produced in the skin at the same time. And the quality of that, uh, the thickness and the uh, obstructive nature of that plug of wax, think of it as candle wax. It can be a little bit more liquid, like a hot candle wax, or it can be a little bit thicker, like a solid candle. And then what happens at the base of that hair follicle and that sweat gland, we've got bacteria and funguses and viruses that live on our skin. All of our skins are covered by that, but there is a particular uh, bacteria called P. acnes, um, and it is one of the common ones that occurs on the skin. Now, why does acne occur at that, in that age group, and in whom does it occur, and why does it occur? Well, acne is very common in the transition from childhood through adolescence to adulthood, and that is the time when our, when our sex hormones are waking up. And in particular, acne, the quality of that sebum, of that fatty layer is directly controlled by testosterone. It's an androgenic phenomenon. But in both boys and girls, we get that acne, we see that acne in the modern era. Uh, boys, because of testosterone, the group of girls that get bad acne genetically have a high propensity under the conditions of a particular disease. Um, to produce high levels of testosterone and lower levels of estrogen and lower levels of progesterone. Estrogen is protective against it in both boys and girls. Testosterone, the androgenic factor, changes the nature of that sebum, makes it more hard, uh, more common, more, more um, larger amounts, and it can plug those vessels. So it's people that are androgenic. Which females get androgenic testosterone, what other problems do they have? Something called polycystic ovarian syndrome. Cysts on their ovaries, irregular periods, hair where they don't want it. That androgenic phenomenon is genetically predetermined, but there has to be a trigger for it. So let's look back. Historically, 100, 200 years ago, and certainly even now if you look at hunter-gatherer populations, a lot of populations out there, no acne. No acne, no acne, no acne, no acne. Those folks move to urban settings. They move to Western urban settings. Acne through the roof. Eskimos, Inuits, uh, 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 Indians, um, uh, Native Indians, um, uh, Mongolians, Aborigines, Maoris, Bushmen, where Okoye, uh, uh, um, San Koi, where I come from. Um, all of, of the first people don't have acne. Don't have acne. And then suddenly get it when they change their diet. So what causes this? What triggers this? Well, when you're on a high-carbohydrate diet, 
A high carbohydrate diet leads to insulin resistance. And insulin resistance in females reduces because your steroid hormones are start out with cholesterol as a precursor, common precursor for testosterone, estrogen, and progesterone, and then under the influence of other hormones get made into estrogen, progesterone, or testosterone. Well, insulin blocks a very early precursor enzyme, blocks the pathway toward estrogen, progesterone, increases the pathway toward testosterone. So boys and girls are getting an increased amount of testosterone, and testosterone is a function of elevated insulin levels, insulin resistance, and the production of a hormone called insulin growth factor number one, IGF-1. And IGF-1 is a very pro-inflammatory uh, um, hormone. And the other hormones in the, same, in the same category, and they cause inflammation. And one of the places they cause inflammation, variety of different places, but one of the common places they cause inflammation is in the skin, and particularly in the skin where you have high sebum-producing glands. So we see it in the face, we see it in the neck, we see it in the chest, we see it in the upper back, armpits, groin areas. Can be anywhere, but those are the common areas we see this change in sebum, this increase in inflammation, and it is directly and consequentially related to a chronically elevated carbohydrate consumption, and it is related to high insulin production people. People with diabetes, early diabetes, or not heavy, uh, they typically don't have these skin disorders unless it's an infectious skin disorder. But the androgenic, high insulin producing people with high, on a high carbohydrate diet, that is the main culprit for acne. Now everybody's gonna get a zit. If you look at my face right now, I've been wearing a mask. I've been wearing the same mask for a couple of days. Sometimes bacteria get on that. I'll get the odd little inflammatory pimple, but that's not a sebum related thing. That's related to particularly aggressive infections. So when it comes to uh, um, uh, to acne, regular, the, the, the horrible skin acne, the acne vulgaris that we talk about, it is a direct consequence of a high carbohydrate, sometimes a high protein, high carbohydrate, low fat diet. It's that simple. And also the other factor that comes in is the human body should cycle. You should be, have high levels of insulin during meal times and low insulin levels with glucagon at other meals. That is a change from an anabolic, where you're building tissue under the influence of insulin, to where you're breaking down tissue autophagy under glucagon. So throughout the day, you should have two phases of that. Well, when there's no phases, because insulin is always high, you're always catabolic, it's a pro-inflammatory condition, and you don't want that. So, what are the best ways to fix acne? That's the cause, but nobody really cares about the cause. Let's figure out what the fix is. The first fix is to start a ketogenic diet. Really what we mean is start a low-carbohydrate, high-fat diet. And the objective is to slowly, progressively reduce your consumption of carbohydrates, of sugars and starches, to try to become more fat adapted and uh, um, have lower insulin levels become insulin sensitive so you restore a cycle of insulin instead of a flat line. So a ketogenic diet is the single healthiest diet to reduce acne. Secondly, as part of that ketogenic diet, early on, the consumption of ketones, ketone salts, ketone esters, and also the consumption of medium chain triglycerides, things like coconut oil, MCT oil, has added value not long term, but to initiate that response. Saturated fat, uh, a ketogenic diet, and migrating a little bit more to having an animal-based diet as opposed to a vegetarian diet is going to help to clear up the skin. The second important part, so the types of fat matter, and in fact, probably the healthiest fat that you can consume, the healthiest fat you consume is marine fat. Fat from fish, fat from seafood, fat from oysters, clams, mussels, shrimp, fat from fish. Now, not everybody has to do that, but because some of us don't like that, but if you can increase the amount of fish, decrease the amount of carbohydrates, you're going to have the healthiest skin. What happened this way, like this? At first, in fact, for the first week or two, your acne may get a little bit worse because your body's not ready for it. It's not used to it. But over the course of three months, take pictures before and take pictures at 90 days. 
Be happy if you sent them to me. I am not wrong on this, folks. I am not wrong on this. But you want to do a dedicated ketogenic diet. The second thing is this. There's a hold-on industry that is built into all these gimmicks and all these creams and stuff you put on your face. They may work a little bit, but they don't fix the problem, the cause of the acne. However, we mentioned before that there are certain bacteria on your skin. I would advise against against antibiotics unless you really, really, really have severe acne. And then the antibiotics only have value if they started as maybe a two or three week course, a week or two after you start a ketogenic diet. So start your ketogenic diet, get two, three, four weeks into it. The acne may not change, it may get a little bit worse. Then go on some course of antibiotics, and we can help you with that, um, to get rid of the bacterial load on the skin. The next thing is very simple. All these expensive creams and pastes, and they may have a minor effect. But really what we want to do is reduce the infectious load on the skin and then populate your skin with healthy bacteria. So there are two substances out there that are excellent, excellent, excellent to decontaminate the skin. And we in surgery use it all the time. The first one is something called chlorhexidine. Hibiclans, chlorhexidine, goes by a variety of different trade names. And I would urge you to get the solution maybe in a scrubbing brush. Because every time I scrub for surgery, scrub my nails, scrub my hands, I sterilize my skin with chlorhexidine. When we prep patients, when we prep patients, we use chlorprep. We use either an alcohol chlorhexidine base or a betadine chlorhexidine based solution to clean their skin so that they don't get infections in their surgical wounds. Well, the same stuff is commercially available. So as you start your ketogenic diet, maybe once a week, every other week, what you do is you wash your body head to toe, get in the shower, wet yourself, get your body with, with water, not pee, um, wash your whole body with hebaclanes with chlorhexidine, but leave it on for between three to five minutes by the clock. It's a long time. Stand that shower with the hebaclanes on you, allow it to work, but then make sure you wash it off thoroughly. You don't want to leave that chlorhexidine on your skin. And in that way, you depopulate the bacterial load of your skin. So it's very important to depopulate your skin, but also on those same days. Yes, teenagers, I'm going to tell you this. Change your bedding, change your clothes. Those piles of clothes. When I was a teenager, teenager, I never had clean clothes. I had dirty clothes, very dirty clothes, and then I had a pile that needed to be washed. Okay? <laughs> Folks, there's no point to doing the hip cleanse uh, decontamination than going back to wearing dirty clothes. So teenagers, wash your clothes, change your bedding, change your towels on that day. Maybe once or twice a week. You don't have to do it every day. But once or twice a week for the course of two or three months, cleanse your skin as part of your ketogenic diet. And the third factor, the third most important thing that you can do. Remember we talked about those two little uh, um, uh, glands, the one that secretes sweat and the other one that secretes fat. Folks, sweat. Go for a run, go for a walk, go have a sauna, sweat. Sweat and then shower and wash that off. Getting the salt out of your system. Now, as part of a ketogenic diet, it's very important you consume huge amounts of salt. Salt is a great barrier of sterilization for everything. Nothing grows in, or very little grows in salt. So sweat. Get, consume high amounts of salt. Sweat. Get that sweat on your skin. Get that sweat on your skin. That aqueous medium will help you tremendously, and the high salt aqueous medium will help to keep your skin more sterile. Don't be a bump on a log. If you're a bump on a log, you're going to have bumps on your face. Get out there and sweat. And it doesn't have to be going for a long run, but sweat, sweat, sweat. So we want sweat, we want a ketogenic diet, and we want uh, sterilization for the first part with either antibiotics or hibber cleanse. Some people will use uh, rubbing alcohol. I advise against that on your, on your face, in the armpits, in the groin area. Be careful with alcohol around the, the delicate bits. Um, it's better to use the hibber cleanse. Now, there are a, there's a lot of bullshit out there as well. The one that gets demonized the most is dairy. Dairy is bad for you. Dairy causes it. Dairy. It may contribute to it. 
but not on a ketogenic diet. So don't be afraid to use, I'd probably stay away from milk products, the, the milk drinking, but if you want to eat some cheese, absolutely fine. Very healthy way to populate your gut and to populate your skin when you're eating cheese. Healthy bacteria, healthy funguses. So don't be afraid of cheese. Green tea, everyone's selling green tea, you must use green tea. Green tea may work for you, but it really is homeopathic in terms of its benefit. Decreasing chocolate, of course, it's part of the ketogenic diet. Decrease your consumption of chocolate. But really those three factors, folks, sweat, clean the skin, ketogenic diet. Send me pictures. If you want me to help, I'd be happy to help. Give us a text, 561-517-0642. But it's that simple, folks. Let me just check my notes and make sure I've covered everything. But that's it. That's it. Are you going to be perfect? Are you going to get a zit every now and then? Of course you are. But it's going to make a dramatic difference. And here's the thing. It only works when you're working it. But, oh, I did miss something. I did miss something. I knew there were four elements. The fourth element is this. You want insulin production and you want insulin to go away. So in terms of your diet, the ketogenic diet should be done and should be started in conjunction with a focus on intermittent fasting. Trying to go, uh, trying to eat all your two meals in an eight hour window and going 16, 18 hours without food. So that you have insulin going up and then glucagon going up. And that's also the biologic barrier for that continuous um, insulin resistance that helps you become insulin sensitive. So the four things, hebeclens or alcohol, hebeclens, um, possibly antibiotics, sweat, ketogenic, low-carb, high-fat diet, and intermittent fasting. Quite frankly, I forget about intermittent fasting because it's so inherent to a ketogenic diet. But if you start with intermittent fasting, if that's easier, and then you slowly get rid of the carbohydrates, it requires both. But getting rid of snacking is vitally important. And it's not only going to help your skin, it's going to help the rest of your body. So those are the four things. Everything else, folks, is a gimmick. If you're spending money on anything else, that's a problem. That's a problem. But there's plenty of science to support what I just talked about. If you want to know, I've got a whole page of the science right here. Plenty of it. So let me just look through my notes. I've always got notes on these to remind myself what I talk about. But focus on the fish. Focus on fresher foods. Lean more toward carnivore. And you are going to be in excellent shape. I am a carb addiction doc. Thank you.